Hey guys, Dr. Berg here. In this video, we're going to talk about the importance of hydrochloric acid or stomach acid. Your stomach acid is probably one of the most important fluids in your entire body because the cascade of negative effects that occur without this acid are huge. Let's go through each one of them. So normally in your stomach, you need a very, very strong acid. That means a low pH. So one to three. So it goes on a scale from one to 14. So one to three is very, very acid. So we need a very, very strong acidic stomach. And that's why when people say, oh yeah, um, our bodies are supposed to be alkaline. Well, what about the stomach? They're probably talking about the blood, but your stomach needs to be very, very acid. Now here's the thing. As you age, you're, you lose your stomach acid, okay? And when you lose your stomach acid, a lot of things happen in a negative way. Um, let's just take one thing. If the stomach is not acidic, you will not release the main enzyme called pepsin. Now what is pepsin and what is an enzyme? An enzyme is something called a catalyst or a thing that helps speed up a chemical reaction in the body. It helps either break things down or builds something back up. So what's interesting about enzymes is, is they basically don't necessarily get used up after they do the work. They're kind of like a self-propelling energy that does all the work but doesn't use up its energy. It's, it's pretty wild, it's, but it speeds up the chemical reaction. So pepsin is a main catalyst or enzyme that breaks down protein. Okay, so that's what it does. But it takes a pH between one, two, and up to three to release this enzyme. So if you're not releasing this enzyme, you can't break down protein. One of the most uh, common symptoms would be intestinal gas. That's when we know we're not getting this release of this pepsin, okay? You're also gonna get bloating and other things. But um, what happens too is that valve on top of the stomach is controlled by the pH. So the valve won't necessarily close if the pH is not strong. So that's called uh, acid reflux, you know, um, or GERD. That's basically because your stomach is not acid enough. What's really ironic is the way they treat it is they give you an anti-acid. So you're gonna feel better, but then you're gonna feel worse because you're taking the acid out of the system. What they should do is put more acid in there to fix it, but they don't really do that. One of the challenges with having um, this valve not closed tightly is that the enzyme splashes up into not just the acid, but the enzyme can go right up all the way up your esophagus, up into your, your larynx and your vocal cords, and that can create chronic coughing. It can create chronic um, hoarseness. It can create um, like that little lump in your throat, a chronic cough, irritation, uh, asthma. That's because this enzyme is going right up in here. And the main reason is because this is not acid enough. So then it leaks up into the esophagus. So that's one symptom. Um, the three main purposes of the acid are number one, to uh, help break down proteins. Uh, number two, absorb minerals. And number three, kill off microbes. So. Like if you see like a dog, for example, eat, um, like use, like eat raw meat, you know, there's microbes and bacteria in there. A dog has a really strong stomach acid. And so that acid is just going to kill all that bacteria. Well, we also have the acid in there to kill microbes as well in case there's, so we cannot have any extra invading microbes come through the stomach. So it's, if we don't have enough acid, we get a bacterial overgrowth. So you might have, um, extra, you know, bacteria that shouldn't be there. Um, and you can get leaky gut because undigested protein can leak through the system and create all sorts of immune reactions because then it goes through the lymphatic system and your immune system attacks it as being a foreign body and bam, allergy. Because allergies are always to proteins, right? So I um, <laughs> wonder why. You know, it's, it's, it starts with the stomach acid. That's why so many people, if they just get the stomach right, everything will do really, really good. And then we have candida. See, normal in your friendly uh, stomach, in your friendly bacteria, in your stomach, in your gut, you actually have a normal candida in there that's supposed to be helpful to you. It's not a bad thing. It's only when it has an overgrowth. If the pH is not correct, if the pH is too alkaline, you'll get an overgrowth of the fungus type candida. Okay? So that'll happen, and that can happen in the mouth, the vaginal area, and your intestines, and your toenails, all over the place. So that's one thing. Um, also, H. pylori. H. pylori 
lives in an alkaline environment. In fact, it'll, it'll even alkalize your stomach to live. It doesn't survive in an acid medium. So normally, like I think most people actually have H. pylori in their stomach. That's a negative microbe. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a neutral microbe that can activate and cause damage if it becomes unfriendly. But it's really controlled by the environment. If the environment is too alkaline, that H. pylori kicks in there and you can have all these main side effects from that. Inflammation, gastritis, all those things. So we have that issue. And then we also have rosacea. Rosacea is a red face. That comes from low stomach acid as well. That's one of the symptoms. Uh, GERD, we talked about that, acid reflux, bloating, gas, indigestion. is basic, All that means is you don't have enough stomach acid. Okay? It could be that you're also taking antacids, which is then causing less acid in the stomach, or even stress can deplete your acids in your stomach. Bad food, junk food, sugar, a lot of things take that acid out of the stomach. Diarrhea, um, you know, can do it as well because you lose all your stomach acids. Vomiting, um, people that have um, uh, bulimia because they vomit, they can lose their stomach acids. So that's, that's some causes. Now let's get into um, undigested protein in your stomach. If you can't break down protein in your stomach and break down into amino acid, then you can't build body tissue. So there goes the hair, hair nail, skin, uh, muscle protein, uh, not to mention uh, neurotransmitters like uh, adrenaline, um, tryptophan, all these amino acids that are supposed to be there to help build your hormones. I mean, serotonin is a pleasure hormone, so it's made from protein. So if that stomach is not right, you're not going to have the building blocks to make those neurotransmitters. They're, they're like hormone type things, but they travel through the nervous system. And then the last thing that'll do is it controls the absorption of uh, minerals. So without that stomach being pH, you can't pull in calcium. You can't pull in magnesium or zinc or um, iron. So you have uh, something called anemia, even pernicious anemia. Um, basically, it's low iron, and it could be also B12, different forms of anemia. But if you can't pull in that iron, then you get a whole a series of additional side effects. One is anxiety. OCD, sleeping problems, tinnitus, it's ringing in the ear, palpitations of the heart, hair loss, itchiness. Like, you can see the cascade of effects that occur from not having the stomach right. And because you have an acid reflux condition or GERD, you're thinking, I have too much acid, and you're basing all the therapies on the wrong solution. And that's where people kind of go from bad to worse. And they're treating all these other conditions when they, if they just fix the stomach, a lot of things will improve. So I think fixing the stomach will fix all the different pHs in the body. That's just my personal opinion. When the B12, um, you need a strong acid in your stomach to digest vitamin B12. So if you don't have B12, you have visual changes, gait problems, fatigue, tingling, numbness, memory problems, a whole bunch of things. Because B12 is involved in your DNA. It's involved in your um, brain tissue. It's involved in your immune system, your energy, your metabolism, so many things. So there, um, what I recommend, of course, in some of the other videos, I recommend apple cider vinegar. For those of people that don't like to take apple cider vinegar, um, I do have uh, something that you can take in a pill form, and it's called apple cider vinegar plus, because I, I have 50% of this is apple cider vinegar powder, and 50% of it's betaine hydrochloride which is an acidifier. So this is what I take be between me. I'm actually right before a meal to acidify my stomach. And what it does is it starts to naturally give you the acids that you're missing. So you can start building up that acidifier and start to really correct the deeper cause. Um, I always recommend taking one before a meal with each meal. And then the next day, take two before each meal and then take three before each meal until you feel really, really, really good in your stomach and you're digesting because you want to gradually increase the acid. Um, some people need a lot of uh, acidifiers to help fix your stomach and they might even need six initially to fix it and then you can back off over time, but you want to gradually go into it. You don't want to just take the huge amount right off the bat. But it's more, I like it because it's corrective because once you have the hydrochloric acid, your body will tend to actually recycle it and it'll start working better. So it's a great solution to uh, fix a lot of problems naturally without having to 
uh, make it worse. Okay, so it's more corrective than anything. So I just wanted to touch on the importance of hydrochloric acid and give you some of the functions of what it does and a deeper understanding of, the, um, of some myths that people have about it. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.